There's five bad habits with the spin move. A lot of them with the beginner players, but also I see some of the ones near the end of this video with advanced players that can get the ball stolen and get a lot of easy fast break layups for the other team, which is gonna make you look bad. But it also could just keep you from being effective with being able to get past your defender, be in control of them, and score a lot more points. But the good news is these exact same bad habits, I've actually been able to help a lot of players in a day or less, sometimes in minutes, fix them, and all of a sudden, boom, the spin move starts working like magic for them. In this video, I'm gonna give you those exact same tips. Be sure to stay tuned to the end of the video because I'm gonna have a way for you to take all this next level with combo moves that will make you unstoppable off the spin move. Leave me a comment. Let me know what NBA player you think has the best spin move. Coach Jesse Minch with Get Handles Basketball, where we train harder and smarter so you can play like the pros. If that's something you're looking to do, subscribe and click that bell icon to catch the newest videos. So you've got the back angle to show the very first thing that I see that a lot of players do when a, this is more for beginners typically. When they do the spin move, they'll switch hands here. Now, advanced players, I'm sure you already know what's wrong with this. Later in the video, there'll be some better stuff for you. But for beginners, the reason you don't want to switch hands here, as a defender, if your defender's here, and you're spinning and you're switching hands here before you've completed the spin, they can steal the basketball. Easy, fast break layup. You don't want that, right? You're probably gonna at least feel pretty demoralized for a little while, if not get put on the bench by your coach. Now, a lot of times I'll have players start this out from a protection dribble just to get it down, but you always wanna make sure you're going, whichever hand is dribbling, you're pulling the ball back and that same side foot is coming back to get past the defender. So really think about reaching when you're starting off with this foot to get past your defender and keeping the ball in the hand until you are past the defender, then pop the dribble down, and switch hands. That timing is big though. Pulling back, pulling back, past the defender, then push the ball down and switch hands. You need to slow down if you are not switching hands at the right time. If you're not sure, have somebody watch you or film yourself and pay attention to when that hand switch happens. It's gotta happen after you've moved completely forward. If you get that hand switch right, now the ball's completely protected the whole way and it's a really safe, great move to do because now my body's between the defender and the basketball, the whole motion. If I switch hands here, that's cookies for them. Click that like button if that first tip helps. This next bad habit is one that affects both beginner players, but also some advanced players, and it's gripping the basketball and how you're gripping it with your hand position. When you're gonna go into a spin move, I would recommend you don't put your hand on top of the basketball because when you're spinning, as you're moving quickly, the ball can just slide right out like that, right? What you wanna do is start the spin move with your hand kind of in front of the basketball. You also wanna make sure your hand is wide on the basketball. Get those fingers wide and grip those fingers in tight into the basketball. Think about trying to palm the basketball. Even if you can't palm it, try to get that kind of grip. If you can palm it, don't actually palm it because that's illegal. But getting your hand in front with those fingers wide will help so the basketball doesn't go flying. It's kind of like if you put a bucket of water in your hand, and you spin really fast, the water will actually stay in the pail. Think about your hand being the bucket and the basketball being the water. If your hand is on the side here and kind of in the front as you move, the ball's not going anywhere. To those of you that are wondering if this is a carry, it really depends on your hand positioning. At the end of the video, I'm gonna link you to another YouTube video that shows you what a carry is and what it is not, but the main thing you wanna pay attention to is that your hand's not more than halfway under the basketball. That being said, if you're doing the spin quick, a lot of times rest won't even see it, but that'll keep you from losing the basketball and allow you to get that spin move off quicker, which I'm gonna have a tip for you later in the video to help you really make it fast. Next bad habit before we get into some of the more kind of advanced detailed things, but they're things that even a beginner should be thinking about and adding into their game. This one is spacing. Shouldn't need to go over this too much. The key is make sure you're close to your defender before you go into your spin move. Cause if you're too far from your defender when you go into the spin move, this would be the bad habit and I come from the spin move, boom, where's the basketball? Right in front of them where they can steal it because I started it too far. I wanna try to be less than an elbow's distance away from my defender. So right here should be the very furthest. If I, I can, I wanna get all the way next to them. So I'm literally touching them before I go into the spin move. That way, now the ball's protected the entire motion and I can seal them from the end of the spin move. If I'm too far away, none of that is gonna happen. I'm not gonna seal them, they can steal the basketball and good chance I'm gonna get my butt put on the bench. Fourth bad habit is where things start to get a little bit more detailed and then at the end of the video, I'm gonna give you those combo moves I promised you. The detail is not turning your head and your eyes quick enough. You might think that sounds kind of weird, like what is that gonna do, why does that matter? Couple things it's gonna do, number one, if you're not turning your eyes very quickly, it's really easy to get disoriented, right? If I'm spinning even like this, like it's not super quick, I can kinda see what's going on, but I can't see what's going on real good. Shorten that time up by turning your head quick, 
So now you can get locked back in on what's going on on the court and you can make a good decision from there. The combo moves that we're gonna talk about later in the video, those are gonna be a lot more effective and you'll be able to make the right choice. But on top of that, if you're turning your head slow, guess what else is slow? Your spin move, that increases the chances of it getting stolen. But if you turn your head quick, your body will naturally follow and then that spin move is gonna get a lot quicker. Now you can use it to start getting past defenders, possibly breaking some ankles with it, sealing them, all that stuff that you're looking to do. And you could quickly go into those combo moves I'm gonna give you in just a little bit. Fifth bad habit, and this is a little bit more advanced. So beginners, I would if, you do, if you're not getting that hand switch thing right that we talked about earlier in the video, I will wait with this until you got that right. So starting from your protection dribble, and then going into the spin. But to make the spin really effective, you've gotta be able to set it up well. So if I'm coming right from this, I mean, yeah, if I got a defender pressuring me and playing tight, I might be able to get it off, especially if they're trying to reach for the basketball. But in most scenarios, you're gonna to need to set it up by stepping into that position and then going directly into the spin move. If you're not doing that, it's gonna make it a little more obvious that you're thinking about going into the spin move so they can slide in front of you and you won't get past them. They might even steal the basketball once again. So a couple of ways you can set that step up. It could be simply just from a dribble, stepping across and immediately pulling the ball back. It could be going from a crossover, stepping and pulling back. I really like to do the between the legs crossover, stepping and pulling the ball back. Some sort of a movement to that direction, or it could even be as simple as you're moving this way and your defender cuts you off, pulling the ball back. But you'll typically for all these want to plant with that opposite foot of the hand that's dribbling, sort of sideways to your defender and then immediately pull the ball back. And the beautiful part about this is it really sells to the defender like you're just gonna continue to move this way, right? Because if I'm crossing over, and now stepping this way, now it looks like I'm going this way. Or if I'm running and moving, it still looks like I'm moving this way as I'm stepping with this foot and I'm already starting to change directions before they even know what's coming. So about those combo moves I promised you, the 10 crossovers in this YouTube video, you can add to the end of this and it'll give you ways to beat your defender pretty much no matter what they do out of the spin move. Here's the video on what a carry is and what it's not. If you wanna see five of the worst dribbling habits, period, check out this video. Click that like button, the subscribe button, and the bell icon to catch the newest videos 